Hello and welcome to the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider of the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Brightwell. We're joined by Sean Burdett and talking about uh, the, the end of the season, Coach. It came a lot more sudden than you thought it would. Last week we were recording kind of a preview show for SMU and then really right at the finish of recording last week's show that never aired, and that's the reason uh, you, you were informed that unfortunately for SMU, and they've been hit very hard this year, all of their athletic department, that they had a uh, – some some COVID issues down there and would not be able to play that last weekend. Yeah, un- unfortunate phone call to receive and, and the news to receive, especially going into your last weekend of the year, your last home weekend, and then, you know, uh, honoring Kincaid Padgett and one of our, you know, our senior. And, you know, kind of unfortunately taking a little bit away there, but I think we were able to do some things to, to honor her and still, you know, have a, an enjoyable weekend to, to finish off with an inter-squad scrimmage, but certainly not the way you – had hoped to finish out the season. I know Ken K would have preferred to play, but but how neat was it just to have the weekend about her? Didn't even have to worry about playing a match. Well, yeah, it was great because, you know, we had friends and family and things in. They were able to see us do an inter-squad scrimmage. We kind of divide things up what we thought was fairly evenly, and we ended up playing five sets. So it was good volleyball. I think everybody had a good time, and she had her family there to support her. And at the end of the day, you know, we were able to probably make it a little bit more, you know, in terms of a true senior day. And, and uh, the team put together an awesome video for her before we went out there. And uh, just, a, a, I think, a good time had by all. Um, certainly you wish to finish it off on a regular match. But if there's any other way to do it, I think that, that was the right way. You could have gone old school youth league and had parents versus the players. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we had enough waivers for that. <laughs> Coach, before we move on, uh, we talked about her last week, but didn't really get a chance to talk about her impact to the program. She's a transfer, Kincaid was. And, you know, she contributed a lot this year. She was kind of a role player the last two years. But the reason you brought her here, not, 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 not so much for, for her on court ability, which she did have a lot of ability, but mentality wise attitude wise when you wanted to reset this program and you came in three years ago she was a player that you felt I think you could build that attitude around you know she comes from one of the best clubs in the country you know in, in Muncieana and you know they are very workmanlike and they they get after it they they you know do the right things and and that's really what I can say about her is she just comes in every day. And I've, I've said this over and over. It's, it's that person and, and the, the type of young woman that you want in your program. People do role model after it. It's not like she goes out of her way to, you know, be uh, some, some leader that she's not. She just does what she does every day. And I, I think it's great to see. And, you know, we've had a lot of text conversations and, and things since the weekend. And, you know, I, I think she, you know, thoroughly in, enjoyed her time here. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's hopefully what we're building. You know, we, we love the volleyball piece, but then to be able to see what they do after their career is over and they leave the University of Memphis and, you know, really kind of embark on that next step of their life, that's the, the neat thing three years from now or five years from now down the road to kind of see how they've grown after after volleyball is over. And that's interesting because it really shows you that she's got her priorities straight. She she could have had an opportunity to play another year because of COVID and the NCAA rules. And, you know, there's no right or wrong decision on that. But she was, you know, she she's played her time and she was focused on starting the, the next chapter of her life. Yeah, you know, and, and it's somebody, you know, for her being a senior, sometimes you have some conflict with classes and everything. And we lose her for a part of practice every day. Um, but she'd come in early and get extra reps done. She'd watch video. And, you know, so at the end of the day, you you really want to see those people succeed once they, they leave here. And, you know, certainly she could always play another season if she ended up doing that. But I know she's going to get some hours and going towards PA school and, you know, working towards that that next step in her life. All right, Coach, uh, let's talk about the season as a whole. I got to play 12 matches. Uh, unfortunately, if you could have, could have played SMU, uh, if you could have taken that series, both of the matches, you could have moved up to third in the standings. But overall, spring season uh, is a little bit different. Uh, I, I know it's a results-oriented type business on wins and losses, but anyone watching this program can see the vast improvements over the three years that you, you have been here leading into the next year. Yeah, I think one of the the neat things is to see people outside of our program watch us play, whether it's on TV or, you know, in person, home away. 
and, and to hear their feedback and, and how we've grown and the strides that we've made. And, you know, I've told people all along this year, we've got a great group of young women and I think, you know, they're ready for that next step. You know, we're in a, in a tough uh, division here in terms of the West. I think we've got a lot of very competitive programs. We've got uh, a lot of people very similar in, in terms of what they can do. And you look at the West teams or compared to the East teams, we had a, a second place, uh, team that finished 500 uh, in Temple, who, you know, kind of beat uh, and upset Cincinnati the last two matches here to get in, but I believe they went four and four and they found themselves into the uh, the conference tournament from the east side. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think, you know, what we do here on the west is, is very comparable, but the conference top to bottom, just highly competitive and, you know, a great place to be and continue to move forward with. So some different things this year due to COVID. Uh just for, for protocols and keeping everyone safe that we've talked about. We'll see if they stay. Number one, you didn't change sides between sets this year. Uh, went from a 10 minute to a five minute intermission, little things to kind of speed things up, uh, keep you from moving around so much. Uh, there's going to be some things in all sports that happen during the pandemic that people are going to go, I, I like that. Let's, let's keep this. Let's don't keep that. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting in our conversations here over the next few weeks. I know we're really in depth right now in terms of how we want the schedule to look in the fall. We've got to shore that up fairly quickly here to know number of weeks that we're playing and when the conference term is going to be, things like that. And really, at, at the end of the day, you know, these were some changes. I think some of them may stick around. Some things may go back to what we would call normal, but I know those will be conversations not only at the conference level, but also, you know, throughout the you know, national government body and, and everything like that. If there was a, a year to open a new arena, probably the pandemic provided an opportunity for you to play the first season of games in the Finch Center, uh, see how you like the setup, where you like the bleachers, where you like the benches, things like that, how you want things to run without having a ton of people in there and having to make it permanent. And now that's something you can do in the off season. Do you want to, move things around? How do you want the game day set up to be? So it provided that opportunity. Yeah, I guess you can call it kind of like the soft opening, you know, yeah. and, and, and what stores do and restaurants do. And I think it really gave us an idea of, wow, this, this can be an impact facility. And at the end of the day, you know, you don't always have the opportunity to kind of, you know, get your feet wet and, and adjust things. Sometimes it's already just there. And I think this is a good kind of ground up build and be able to put things the way we want it. Finally, coach, uh, you had a, a long off season, about 15 months. Now you're gonna have a very short off season to get cranked up back to normal, hopefully. Uh, in the yeah. Fall. Yeah. You know, we, we, um, the players are on kind of a week break this week and then we'll come back and we're going to get about two and a half weeks in just to, again, be around them, kind of shore things up, work on some individual small group technique things, but just touch the volleyball a little bit, but not anything overwhelming with them. Make sure they continue to, to get a little bit of uh, strength building in as well in the weight room. But then finals are right around the corner and really we're, we're going to be back at it in about four months. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think it was a good transition period and season, uh, but it's exciting to get back out there come August. I guess, I guess the bonus of short off season for you is with the spring season now is as they're not sitting around for 10 months, hoping that, you know, <laughs> they come back in shape. They've, they're only going to have a couple of months and whatever they do. I don't, I mean, I know they don't, they, they don't, but there's not a, really a summer league or anything that, but I'm sure they'll keep their conditioning. So you'll get them back pretty quick for, uh, for, for fall camp. Yeah. And, you know, I think the biggest thing is let them get a good break here uh -huh. after finals are over and decompress and be around family and friends and things like that. I think get back to that balance that we had before, because I tell you, this has been tough times for everybody and I'm really proud of how they, you know, tackled it and handled it. And, you know, we really, did things on our end to make sure we secured ways to play and practice. And, you know, that goes again from the, from the, the top down in terms of administration and health officials, things like that. And I can't thank everybody enough for all those things. All right, coach, as always, it's been a pleasure. I'm sure we'll catch up with you in the off season and we'll see you in the fall. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeff. That is Sean Burdett. I'm Jeff Brightwell with the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network.